This is ENP Reports from Editor and Publisher Magazine, the authoritative voice of news media since 1884, serving newspapers, broadcasts, digital, and all multimedia news publishing. And hi, once again, Mike Blinder, publisher of ENP Magazine Quick Housekeeping, listening to us on your favorite podcast platforms, Spotify, Apple, Google, whatever flavor, by all means, follow us. If you're watching us on your YouTube channel, I should say our YouTube channel, smash that that subscribe button below, hit the bell to the right. You'll get an update each and every time we upload a new episode of ENP Reports. I have neighbors with me today. I say neighbors because I hail from Tampa Bay, Florida. I moved here, sir. Um, uh, Patrick, I don't know if you ever Google me, you'll find that I moved here for the airport. I was building a consulting business 20 years ago, started flying tens of thousands of miles a year. And I remember landing in Tampa going, man, this is a great airport. You're like, no tarmac time. And by the way, never did I land in the middle of a thunderstorm. I had to learn later that the <laughs> thunderstorms down here delay you. But I moved to this area and I've, I've, I've been a happy resident now for 22 years. You and I have never met, but we're in the same industry. Yes. Patrick, your family, correct me if I'm wrong, has has owned one of the oldest minority owned newspapers in the United States of America. You're the only trilingual newspaper in America and you call it La Gaceta, am I correct, sir? Yes, we do, La Gaceta. Gaceta. Um, my grandfather started the newspaper in 1922. He immigrated to Ybor in, uh, in uh, 1913. Uh, was a lecturer in the cigar factory where he read to workers newspapers and entertained them. I, this is this is a wonderful, and you're also a historian. You are on many committees to preserve uh, Ybor City and, and Tampa Bay. With us also today is Jean Sudit. Is that correct, sir? Sudit. Sudit. You are the assistant editor of La Gazette. La, La Gazette. Did I say that correct, Jean? La Gazette. And that stands for the Gazette. You see, I can go to Google and put in something Spanish. Yeah. We're going to talk about not only. Um, minority-owned, uh, uh, trilingual, we're going to talk about politics, we're going to talk about history and heritage, and we're going to do all that right after this. This episode of ENP Reports is sponsored by IQ Audience Plus by Town News. Consumer revenue has never been more important. Digital leaders at media organizations worldwide are asking the same question. How do we accelerate the growth of consumer revenue? Traditional one-size-fits-all paywalls aren't the answer. They're blunt instruments that treat all visitors the same way, costing you money. IQ Audience Plus by Town News is a smart, dynamic metering solution that empowers you to maximize revenue by identifying key audiences, seeding engagement, and growing membership and subscriptions. Ready to supercharge your consumer revenue, grow engagement, and bolster your advertising income? Visit townnews.com backslash EP today to learn more about IQ Audience Plus by Town News. Patrick, Gene, how, okay, Patrick, your family goes way back. You obviously are a, you met your wife in high school. She was your prom date. I did a little, I did a little, yeah, you know, searching. Absolutely. Right still, still loves me, still works here. You know, it's great. I'm a lucky man. And your great, your grandfather started the paper in 1922. Yeah. Yeah. Your father ran it until 1988, correct? When you took over. 1998, he passed away. 1998, he passed away. And your he wife worked is... just like my grandfather did every day at the newspaper until basically they died or couldn't work. You have ink in your veins, as we like to say. Mm -hmm. um, your wife is your business partner, not unlike me. Yes. And so your background was and is and has been not just journalism, but the community. I mean, I've, you're, all, you're very active uh, politically down there, your father and your grandfather both were. I understand your your grandfather back in the 20s was someone that all the politicians came to to learn who was going to be the next. You know, he had this almost tea leaf reading about where Tampa was heading. But uh, quickly, Gene, are you a local resident? Did you grow up here as well, sir? What is your background? Well, I've lived here since 1999, but I am originally from New Jersey. I uh, moved here in 19. Uh, I'm sorry, moved here in 99, 26 years old uh, for the weather. Um, <laughs> I did for the airport. You moved to the weather. And do you uh, have a journalism in your background, sir? Did you, did you, I, I think you wrote once for a paper I saw years ago. Uh, no, well, no, I've, I, I, uh, I had a nationally syndicated column with Bleacher Report. That's uh, right. I was sort of on the ground floor when Bleacher Report started, which became CNN's sports wing. Uh, so I had a, a good few years doing that. 
Uh, but that was while I was here. Uh, when I originally started here, it was uh, more clerical and uh, sort of evolved since then. The title's always been the same, but the jobs gained more responsibilities. All right. So let's first talk about Ebor uh, or the uh, Tampa Bay uh, Hispanic Center. Can I use that term, Patrick? Would you say? Sure. All right. Or the Latin, the Latin Quarter we prefer. The Latin Quarter. Um, those that study history, and I, I'm a historian as well, sir. I, 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 I studied this area. I've toured. Um, some of the, the, the housing there. I've, I've been I, I, fascinating. In the 20s, correct me if I'm wrong, Ebor was a hop in place. And there was also a criminal activity here, correct? We were, we were bringing in liquor. Am I right or wrong? This, the, 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 the... No. In the 20s was our heyday. You, uh, Ebor City, West Tampa, produced a half a billion hand-rolled cigars. Uh, we had 400 factories. Uh, the Latin community was a force that had to be dealt with politically, unlike most minority communities in the South. And, uh, and there was a relationship uh, between uh, uh, Anglo uh, criminal elements and Latin criminal elements. Uh, and some of that involved around politics and delivering votes. Uh, we had Belita, which was uh, the lottery, uh, you know, what was once illegal is now legal and run by the state. But back then it was the basically the same thing. Uh, and they would call out numbers at the end of the week. And it was a huge industry to sell Belita tickets and to gamble that way. Um, of course, you know, prohibition also caused a uh, more criminal activity because you had a, a, uh, a great relationship and a very uh, short distance between uh, here and Havana. And uh, so, you know, you would get rum coming across during Prohibition, uh, both, the, you know, certainly in Key West, but also into Miami and into Tampa. And, and all of that helped uh, stimulate uh, uh, mafia. Now, one of the ways you, you mentioned the reader, um, I found that fascinating. One of the ways these thousands of cigar rollers who were artisans, I mean, it, you just you had to actually apprentice to, to, to learn how to roll the right. perfect cigar, right? It wasn't like you walked in and said, hey, give me a job. So they would be working with their hands in factories, treated very well, I understand. They were fed, they had housing. It was a, it was a vibrant job. But to, to pass the time, someone sat way up high, right, on a bench yes. and yes. did what? He would read to them. So he was hired by the uh, workers. He did not work for the factory, did not work for the factory owner. Uh, the workers would hire him and they would pay him. And they would also program uh, what reading material they wanted that week. So they might have a, an hour and a half worth of news, reading about uh, world news, local news. Uh, they would also then uh, maybe serialize a novel. And so they'd pick what that novel was. And so in the afternoon, there might be reading from the novel. Um, in fact, there was even a newspaper, uh, La Tradition, that was designed specifically for the reader to purchase, not for people to purchase. <laughs> uh, La Tradition would get every piece of English journalism they could as early as they could. They would translate it. They would print it every morning. And then they would sell to the lecturer with a price based on how many people he read to. Because so if I had a very small factory, I might pay a dime for the Tradition. If I had a large factory, I might pay a quarter for it. And so it was a newspaper designed specifically to be read aloud. You know, like you just described the first model of CPM cost for a thousand. You know, it's all about audience, right? <laughs> <laughs> so, it, 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 but it was very innovative when you think about it, you know, and, and it really even harkens to what newspapers do today or, or have done and what speed TV journalism a lot, you know, with, with a story that they're going to you know, gonna do that day. Well, let's fast forward now to 2022 here in Tampa Bay, a massively growing community. Um, we're now one of the top three with home values uh, have risen massively. Um, lots of people want to move to the side of the state um, because it's still relatively cheap. I mean, we think it's, it's getting expensive here, but when you order a meal here and the uh, entree at a nice restaurant's only $26, you go to New York City, that's what you pay for a cocktail. I mean, there's still relatively cost less to live here. What is the Hispanic uh, culture today? How is it surviving? Is it still vibrant? Is it like yesteryear in the 20s? What is the culture that you're now communicating with? How, how diverse is it? Is it growing? Is it, is it leaving, sir? 
uh, we continue to get new immigrants in. They come from different places. Um, uh, what used to be a Cuban dominant area is now Puerto Rican dominant, uh, Mexican, uh, depending on uh, uh, issues at the border and how well we welcome them uh, in the uh, to work on the farms can be second or third place in the numbers in this area. Um, Cuban is still there, uh, but uh, Cuban is constantly being replaced by new Cuban. So we have areas of Tampa that still have Spanish language signs, but there we don't have a frozen population. Immigrants here learn English because they have to, because English is language of money, but they're constantly replaced by a fresh set of immigrants who are Spanish dependent. And so that helps our newspaper survive because we catch them on both sides. We catch them when they first get here with Spanish language, but also as they mature and they start to get more money and start to get more involved in business, we can also serve them on that side with English. I'm gonna stay with Patrick for a few more seconds. Gene, you hang in there. I got some questions for you. So Patrick, I think one of the misnomers, because you're not the first um, a piece we've done on Hispanic publishing. Um, one of the misnomers is everybody thinks that um, a Hispanic is just, it, it's, it's one type of person. But that's so untrue. You just mentioned immigrants from different places have completely different cultures and political leanings. Am I correct? Someone from Cuba or a Cuban background might be polar opposite politically to someone who, who, who migrates here from Puerto Rico. Am I correct, sir? Yes, absolutely. And so, and also have a different view of it. Uh, you know, with, with immigrants from uh, places other than Puerto Rico, I have to uh, talk to them about immigration. With Puerto Ricans, I don't have any of that discussion. They're American citizens once they get here. Okay, so let's then uh, bring in Gene. Gene, how do you write to that? I mean, you're the assistant editor. Where, where, I mean, I know for a fact, based on the blogs and where your paper is, is you lean politically to the left in a state that, is crazy to the right right now in a lot of ways. I mean, it's a zany state. There's no question about it. But I mean, but how do you write to that and still be holistic to a, in a trilingual paper with these completely different cultures that all just happen to have one thing in common, maybe speaking a common language? I think it has to do with honesty. Uh, when you are writing, you know, we lean that way because it's where our heart is. So we're not writing to a party or to our uh, whatever these ideals are as a group. It's what we find to be honest. So if there's something we see that needs exposure or someone needs help or there are, uh, you know, if we need to speak truth to power, that um, it just so happens that that's where our heart is, that we're not writing because we're Democrats or liberals or whatever you want to call that. It's that what we write is in line with them. So as long as we're honest and and, and truthful to uh, the people who we're trying to help, I think that um, that's the, you know, the crux of it, that something that we're trying to do. I think it's a natural thing. Do you believe strongly that a Hispanic population within a city, which many, many cities all over North America have now, deserves its own voice? Is there a necessity? Well, it needs its own voice. Um, and even take someone like me, for example, uh, you know, I'm a, I'm Polish Italian from New Jersey. I didn't know I was a Latin because in Tampa, Italian's a Latin. <laughs> um, and in these communities, um, there is a voice that, that, that's needed. And as the major dailies, uh, sort of go away, um, it's even more important because, uh, you know, as I, I heard Patrick saying the other day that, um, you know, our, our news that we pick isn't based on clicks. Uh, it's not based on whatever the most popular thing that we want people to read. It's we want people to read what we feel is important. It's our job. And people look to us for that. What does Laga Seta think is important? What does Patrick Mantega think is important? Um, not to say that it is the most important things, but, but it's what Patrick feels is important. And um, we want to present that. And we feel that that is a, a very important thing that, that we are trying to look out for those minority communities and are exposing people to things they may not be aware of as opposed to you know, stories about puppies and and whatever else uh, is going to get uh, more clicks. Or more share. There, there's a hard truth out there that also needs to be uh, shown and, and the minority populations um, have a, a great need of a voice and education and knowledge about those things as everyone else does, but 
This, this, Patrick, this is the cross we chose. Patrick, you've got an audience here of about three to 4,000 on a, uh, we get on a monthly basis on this platform who are mostly three quarters, according to our research, you. They are owner, operator, C-suite, either editorial leads, advertising leads, um, or owners like you, or, or at least reporting to a boss or a hedge fund or whatever. Okay, is this a viable business, sir? I mean, how many employees have you got? How do you distribute? And how are you, are you able to squeeze out a few dollars a week so you can take send your kids to college? How, how are things going in this? You're laughing, Gene. I'm getting mean. I mean, for those of you that are on the audio only, Gene just smiled and laughed. Am I asking a bad question, Patrick? Did oh, I put the kids, way? kids are educated. <laughs> No, it's uh, it's a good question. Um, uh, business has been good uh, for the last uh, few years. Um, we have a niche where we do a lot of legal advertising, and it's a very stable uh, base of advertising. Um, this uh, advertising Hispanics is is popular now, so we get a lot of ads without having to work really hard because uh, different industries are trying to reach out to the Hispanic community. Um, so. Uh, uh, things are good. Um, but you're a free paper, so you're supported by advertising, correct? Oh, no, we're a paid newspaper. Oh, she's by ignorance. I saw. So even Wawa, by the way, which is from my yeah. hometown, Pennsylvania, yeah. I'm from Philly boy there, Gene, I know you're from Jersey, but <laughs> even Wawa then Last sells, sells your newspaper. Okay, so you're a paid newspaper. Your website seemed wide open to me, though. I, I went to. Uh, your website is because we don't give you a newspaper. On the website, you have items that say, this is a, we give you a paragraph and they say, if you want to read more, go buy a newspaper. Okay. Uh, we're, we're probably the oldest fashion newspaper you're going to be around. We do not give it for free. Um, uh, everybody pays for it. Um, and um, and we're happy with our niche. I think that that's probably very, very unusual. I think a lot of people aren't happy with their niche and they're fighting to, you know, be everything to everybody. And we don't want to be everything to everybody. I'm okay being what I am. Okay, so circulation then, sir. How many puppies do you print a week, if I may ask? Well, we, uh, we uh, distribute out to uh, 10 counties. Uh, we've had a very stable circulation, but uh, what we've lost is some uh, mail circulation. We picked up in retail circulation. So around 18,000 and uh, in that way for probably 20 years, 30 okay, years. Okay, so, so we've lost market share, but we've maintained a base. Let me ask you this, sir. How important is um, the revenue from advertising versus circulation revenue? Can, may I get, and tell me, to get, tell me to go away if I'm asking too many personal questions. Advertising over. revenue is everything to us. It is. So it's not the circ revenue, it's the average. Oh, no, we're just, we're just covering costs or trying to even cover costs. All right. What about your sales department? Um, is it local versus national versus regional versus agencies? How much is street fighting, as we like to call it, going out on the street, knocking on doors? How much is being dealt with on an agency level or a demand level, if I may ask? You're going to feel uh, that that's, um, we haven't had a salesman here for 10 years. That is amazing. You don't have a salesman. I sell. Gene sells. I, you know, I make a few phone calls. Uh, uh, you know, I reach out. But no, we haven't had a salesman in uh, in ten years. Wow, and the and and it's a and the most salesman we've ever had has been one. <laughs> and I've worked here since 1983, and the most salespeople we've ever had here is one. All right, so let's talk politics. That in Florida, let's talk truth to power. Give me an example, Gene, of, an, uh, of a story you've done recently that pissed someone off. Excuse my language. When, when you, <laughs> but give me an idea of when you really- I wrote a story, not in the politics line, but in, the, in terms of uh, growing up a New Jersey Catholic. And uh, my version of what I thought being a Catholic, being an altar boy, and what I learned uh, coming through did not agree with uh, one of our readers who cut my column out and wrote on it- uh, you are a dead member of the church <laughs> uh, in red ink. And I wasn't sure if it meant that, uh, that she didn't think I was Catholic or if I was going to be meeting her soon. So, <laughs> um, yeah. What, you know. what, what about the politics of the area? I mean, there's a very small liberal core here in Tampa Bay. I think Pinellas County 
actually went a little blue in the last election, but even that one comes in red, Pasco's red. Um, for those who don't understand, there's a corridor we're, we're here between Orlando and Tampa, that we now call it affectionately Orlampa sometimes, where there is some liberal, but we're surrounded by a very, very um, far right environment here in Florida. Are you, and I'm not picking sides here, I'm simply saying, are most of your readers liberal, would you say? Do you, do you re represent their views or is, do you sometimes get... Oh, I ahead. have a lot of I have a lot of hardcore Republicans who uh, read us. We have a lot of uh, hardcore Democrats that read us. Um, uh, I, I think what uh, the both sides appreciate is, is that they know where we lean. You know, it's not a hidden thing. We're not claiming to be uh, completely unbiased. We're saying we got a little bias and here it is and this is what we think and and this is from our point of view. And so I think people feel that way. I think the Republican Party people like us because sometimes we're, this, we're talking about the items that they don't like about their party. I think the Democratic Party people sometimes like us because I'm talking about what I don't like about my party, which is Democrat. And they want to also correct our party. So a lot of times we offer criticism on both sides. Um, but uh, it's done kind of transparently. And, and I think that you know, so many people claim fair and balanced as opposed to being fair, but in balance, we would like to say, um, you know, and, and so we're a little imbalanced, but we're going to be fair about it. Do you agree, Gene? Certainly. Um, you know, there's going to be a lean, uh, but editorial, uh, and a lot of people confuse this editorial, which, uh, you know, our paper is more opinion and commentary than hard news. If we break a story, it's because we've been learning about it and what we come out once a week. So story comes out on Tuesday, it's a little more difficult for us. You know, social media helps that a little bit. But um, we, uh, you know, people want to see what we think about matters and, and we've thought about them hard and, and, and weighed different uh, you know, sides of, of problems. So um, it's, it's balanced in that we've balanced it. Uh, but, you know, I would say we're always fair. Um, people might not like what we say, but we're certainly fair. Patrick, your family has had this for 93 years now. Um, 100. 100. 100. Excuse me. I, I, I apologize. 100 years. Okay. Do you have offspring with ink in their veins? Will this, do you think this will be passed on to the family and, or, or you? I had uh, my oldest daughter work here. I encouraged her to go find another occupation. <laughs> uh, my middle daughter worked here. I encourage her to go find another occupation. My son has helped out here, but he's never worked here. Um, um, you know, I've still got some years left in me and who knows where our industry is going to be and what it's going to look like. And so I have grandchildren. And so maybe I can last till the grandchildren can make a decision. Uh, or maybe one of the kids might want to come back, you know, um, but, um, uh, no, I don't have a, a plan of, of succession. Uh, okay. I play it by ear. Gene, I have to ask this question just because it begs to be asked. If you resent it, I'll edit it out. You're, you're not Hispanic in your background. You've already made it clear. You are, you, you, are you bilingual, sir? I mean, do you? Well, when I started here uh, as a 26-year-old, it was more clerical. As I said, I had a little bit of French and Italian that I took in school. Um, so I thought that got my foot in the door and I remember Patrick telling me that he was going to hire me on a 30 day probationary period. Now he's never told me I've been off that probationary period. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, but it, it has been, you know, in my family, um, we're actually, uh, on my grandmother's side were newspaper publishers in Belgium. They were the publishers of the largest newspaper there. And uh, she uh, worked for the UN for a long time. And in my family, there was a lot of different languages spoken. Uh, I didn't pick a whole lot of that up, but uh, starting working here and, and through the 23 years I've been here, uh, I, I've sort of adopted it as my culture too. It's hard not to. Um, it's a, it's a, they're lovely people and it's a, I, I couldn't imagine doing anything else. Okay. Um, Patrick, you are a, based on what I've read, and when I Googled you, you come up in a numerous places, especially in local news. You're pretty much uh, embedded here in Tampa Bay. Other publishers uh, who I have interviewed that be, have been very successful like you, 
in surviving the ups and downs in the industry aren't looking at this just as a business, but as a heritage, as a voice, as you know, I, I, I'm hearing from you. I, how important is that would you give to advice to someone else who may be thinking of getting in the game right now of, of being part of the community? And you have to understand in our industry now, hedge funds and large companies are eliminating publisher positions altogether. I mean, it's just, it's just a, you know, it's just a, it's a business like a car dealership. We got a guy making money, got a guy doing product. That's enough for me. Um, how important would you say that is for the future of your brand and keeping it going for another century? You know, we survived, my grandfather, my father, I survived because this wasn't our business. It was our child. Uh, you nurture it. You don't take from it. You give to it. Um, I'm in this business to change the world, to change my corner of it, to make things better. Um, and that makes it very enjoyable. If I was here to make as much money as possible, I'd find a new business. Uh, but I'm in a unique business that does allow you to every day learn. Every day I get to learn something new. That's amazing in most businesses, you know, where you have to do the same thing over and over again. Every day I'm able to help people. Every day I'm able to hurt people if uh, they're doing the wrong things. Um, uh, you know, I can see things in my town that exist because of us. I can see things that ex don't exist because of us that makes you feel really good. And so, you know, uh, I, I think that, you know, I used to in the nineties when I would interview kids and eighties to, to give them jobs here, they would talk about changing the world. They would talk about wanting to fix it. I don't talk to a lot of journalists. I don't talk to a lot of people in my industry who tell me that anymore. I think that's tragic. I think if you really want to make a difference, you really want to change the world, this is a great place to do it. Uh, if you want to go make money, I don't know what to tell you. I, you know, I, 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 I you know, we, 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 we're alive. We're making money today. We made money yesterday. Uh, I feel good about it. But at the end of the day, uh, I enjoy what I do. There you go. If someone wants to get a physical copy of your paper every week, whether they're down here in Florida or in Toledo or even Altoona, how do they subscribe, sir? Where do they go online to get to become a subscriber? Um, you go, well, first of all, we're $35 a week in Hillsborough County. Uh, Gene, what are we uh, in California? We're $35 a year in Hillsborough County. California would be $45 a year. There you go. Money hey, well spent. And where do you go, La Gene? If you go to lagasetsandnewspaper.com, um, you can uh, you can just you can contact us through that and we will get it to you. Um, there's, you know, you can either email us or call, um, but we're, uh, we're happy to send it to you and, and spread someone, the good word. If someone wants good advice, they can find your contact information at L-A-G-A-C-E-T-A -A -A newspaper.com. Am I correct, gentlemen? Correct. Correct. Well, I, wonderful interview. Amazing, amazing place to be right now, I would say, is, is niche, uh, the growing Hispanic population and more importantly, uh, the Tampa Bay community. So Patrick and Gene, next time I'm down there with uh, to, to find the perfect brew and to get the perfect cigar, do you mind if I swing by and say, hey? Swing by, we'll go break some bread. You got a deal. You guys have a good day and stay healthy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.